really we need a, a facility of sufficient size and capacity now to meet our future uh, demands, not just from patients clearly, but also from visitors and from staff as well. So the timing of this unit was important to make sure we delivered on some of those promises in many respects for future generations. We have listened, as you'd expect, to concerns that have been raised by visitors and patients where they can over the years, and we've tried to respond to that. So the first point was listening to what patients were saying about the care we were able to give in the hospital. And the second thing is really preparing ourselves for a, perhaps a more complex future and building a unit that's got sufficient size and capacity for us to cope with the patients we expect to see in coming years. The need for the building was that the existing ICCU unit was nearly 10 year old. Uh, it was built, uh, originally it was built out of the normal ward and just converted it and we were having a number of problems with patient care. So what was decided that very, very quickly we needed a new ICCU unit. We'd already delivered um, two 28 bed wards um, at Bradford Royal Infirmary which was another modular scheme. That scheme was delivered in six months from start to finish. They'd seen that we'd demonstrated um, that we could work as a team with DSSR and DKP, who were the other framework partners at Bradford Royal Infirmary. The trust went with the uh, procurement route because they needed to deliver the new facilities in the, in the quickest possible time that they had and they saw the modular option as the, the, the best benefit to themselves. One of the key drivers was to bring a lot of what we do to the bedside whilst at the same time improving the environment for the patient. So you've got what I would consider two opposing things there. So whilst we want to bring monitoring, data collection, nurses working to the bedside, at the same time you, you want to allow the patient's privacy, a quieter environment and not compromise on the terms of the quality they get, so not to compromise in terms of safety. And those things were quite carefully thought out in the design, so we looked to design features for that, such as, you know, the glass to, for visibility, for privacy. And key drivers or key criteria, if I may say, were ensuring that our nursing staff can spend as much time as possible looking after the patient rather than spending time on doing long journeys, if I may say, within the unit. The new ICCU at Sunderland is uh, one of the most advanced in the country. Uh, the client came to us with a, a very innovative concept as to how they wish to deliver their ICCU service. Uh, it's always very exciting to work on schemes like that. Uh, in the delivery of 18 separate uh, ICCU spaces separated by switchable glass walls, uh, this is a, you know, a, an industry leading solution of which the Trust are rightly very proud. What was decided that very, very quickly we needed a new ICCU unit and that the most important thing was to look at infection control issues. To enable this to happen, we decided that uh, what we would do is have a dirty corridor, a clean corridor, and then separate all of the dirty functions from the clean functions. The coming together of all the members of the design team including areas that sometimes were traditionally neglected such as IT um, has been a real has been a, has been a unique experience not only could we incorporate a lot of what the government expects of healthcare design in the future single sex accommodation um, best practice in infection control but it gave us the opportunity in a, in a critical care area to really up the ante in terms of um, workflow in terms of quality, the, the quality of the, the environment for the patient. In terms of the design, uh, right from day one, uh, one of the main drivers was patient safety, and that would include infection control, uh, but also national initiatives like privacy and dignity, um, lean and efficient working. Um, they all figured highly, as well as some local initiatives um, that we discovered from patient surveys, so reducing noise. Um, reducing the amount of time that families have to wait to get in to see their, uh, their relatives. And the key to this scheme was giving the client a high quality clinically um, led design. And with that in mind, we worked closely with the trust right from the start to make sure that the actual scheme layout was based on what they needed and the, and, and the specification was of a, of a very high standard. We'd almost treated the scheme like a traditional design for the internal fit out. And it was only really the modules themselves which we left to the uh, modular contractor to design. 
what we tried to do was to go back and almost achieve a nightingale uh, style ward which is much easier to keep an eye on the patients um, but side rooms within that so the um, idea about the glass came from that just discussions and bouncing ideas around the table the idea of an external corridor was an idea we'd seen on a DVD from the United States um, which allowed um, the separation of visitors and um, waste, uh, waste's disposal team so that they weren't coming in the department um, the visitors could come in in their own separate entrance so as far as possible um, keep the department as quiet and as clean as possible The key for the client was the uh, clinical um, functionality of the uh, unit. You know, we were looking to do this within a modular scheme um, and the general perception of modular is that you have a compromise on the layout of the building. So the way in which we did it was we designed the building around a modular, uh, the sort of basic principles of a modular layout and then it went out to all the modular contractors before we invited them to tender so that we were sure that we'd get a scheme that the trust was happy with. What we had a look at was uh, the visual aspect of everything, how would staff see it. The design in itself meant that it was long, it was a long building, therefore it was very important that staff were able to see patients and patients would be able to see staff. So on this what we, what we looked at was to bring a lot of glass into it. What we, what we had was a lot of glass doors, a lot of glass screens, which went to appear when you just press the button. As with any hospital site, they are very complex sites. Um, there was a lot of early enabling works on the project to um, move services, substations, catering departments. Uh, these all had to be moved out of the way before we could uh, break ground with the, new, with the new construction work. The services for this, for this new ward and intensive care block are a mixture of relatively simple in the ward accommodation but then very complex for the intensive care. This was made slightly more interesting in that the intensive care unit sat in, in between ward floors uh, providing its own challenges in terms of integrating those services uh, at the same time as uh, allowing us to deliver the floor plate uh, which the trust were so keen to achieve. The technology side of things, the, the monitoring system is unique um, to this company uh, and at the time we put it in it was the world first installation of the system and it's allowed us to bring many of the functions that traditionally were done by computers in the rooms closer to the bedside. So not only have we done away with computers within the rooms, but we've, it's enabled us to integrate into other hospital systems from directly within the monitoring. So we've got one point of focus for the nursing staff, one point of focus for the medical staff. My director came into my room in November 2008 and said that we needed a new ICCU unit plus some wards and that the building was 9,000 square metres but he wanted it as quick as possible. It ended up from the day him coming into my office until that building was actually opened fully was in actual fact 29 months. The design team provided exactly what the trust required. Resident medical staff were saying they weren't having to prescribe as much sedation. Again, it's an anecdote. Little things like that, I think, genuinely, from the patients, we're getting informal feedback that they find the environment much nicer. Privacy when they want it, uh, but they can still retain visibility and, and look around. So I think the, the staff their initial fears about single rooms, size of the unit and their worries about um, being able to look after their patients have not been borne out. It's given us the capacity to position ourselves um, for the future as a much more, or able to handle much more complex uh, patients. Uh, it's a much better environment as hopefully uh, you'll be able to, uh, to see. And of course the other side of that is actually we've got better engaged staff because they were part as you know of the design and the build of the unit itself. And as a result of having better engaged staff, clearly we hope that's going to lead to better morale and improved service for patients in the future.